So now we will discuss structured data, numpy structured arrays. Now we will make a new file. Closing this one. Now Now we will rename the file, saving the file by the name. Structured data numpy structured arrays. Now, while often our data can be well represented by a homogeneous array of values, sometimes this is not the case. This lecture and upcoming lecture demonstrates the use of numpy structured arrays and record arrays, which provide efficient storage for compound heterogeneous data. While the patterns shown here are useful for simple operations, Scenarios like this often lend themselves to the use of pandas data frames, which we will discuss in the pandas section. So imagine that we have several categories of data on a number of people, say name, age, and weight. And we'd like to store these values for use in a Python program. It would be possible to store these in three separate arrays, starting it off with input numpy as empty now name is equals to in the square bracket Alice sketchy dog Now, age is equals to 25, 45, 37, and 19. 25, 47, 47, 19. Weight is equals to 55.0, 55.5, 55.6, 55.7. Okay, so, but this is a bit clumsy. There's nothing here that tells us the, that the three arrays are related. It would be more natural if we could use a single structure to store all of this data. NumPy can handle this through structured arrays, which are arrays with compound data types. Recall that previously we created a simple array using an expression like this, which was the expression Was like this. You can similarly create a structured array using a compound data type specification. I guess we should run that. Now we can similarly create a structured array using a compound data type specif specification like this. Use a compound data type for structured array. Data is equals to np dot zero for deep dive is equal to names name age weight then comes gonna remove that for a while then comes formats in colon u10 I4 then F8 
É item. Now we will put the square bracket first. So we will put the bracket. Print the type. I guess we got an error here. Let's look at that. We have an error here. D type four comma D type is equals to name. Then we have name, age, weight. Then we have a bracket. Then we have format. Then we have Newton I four F eight. Uh, I don't know why it's showing an error. Yes, we should look at that. So I guess we should change the brackets here. Now we will change the bracket. I hope this works. Now this works. So we put the bracket different bracket. So here U10 translates to Unicode string of maximum length 10 i4 translates to 4 byte that is 32 in bit integer and f8 translates to 8 byte that is 34 sorry 64 bit float we'll discuss other options for these types in the following lectures now that we have created an empty container array we can fill the array with our lists of values like that is in the square bracket now we will use a simple square bracket name data now we got this so as we have hoped the dead the data is now arranged together in one convenient block of memory. The handy thing with structured arrays is that you can now refer to values either by index or by name. Okay, so now get first row of data, data square bracket zero. Now get the name from the last row, data minus one. Doug. So using Boolean masking, this even allows you to do some more sophisticated operations such as filtering on age. So get names where age is under 30. Data, data, age, 30. Now, closing the square bracket, opening the square bracket again, name, So note that if you would like to do any operations that are more complicated than these, you should probably consider the Pandas package covered in the next section. As we will see, Pandas provide a data frame object which is structured, built on NumPy arrays that offers a variety of useful data manipulation functionality similar to what we have shown here and much more. <coughs> So creating structured arrays, that's the topic we are going to discuss now. So structured array data types can be specified in a number of ways. Earlier we saw the dictionary method, which is np.d 
unit type. Make sure you put the different bracket. I guess we should copy that down here. this type this time we will just we got this so for clarity numerical types can be specified with python types or numpy d types instead now np dot d type now let's copy that down again and copy this down but there will be some changes that is and we will put another bracket and now we will write np.str underscore comma 10 brackets close comma removing this writing int comma np.float do there we got this so a compound type can be also specified as a list of tuples now writing it down np dot d type simple bracket then square bracket then simple bracket name s10 Age I four weight F eight we got this. So if the names of the string of the types do not matter to you, you can specify the types alone in a comma separated string like this s10 i4 f8 we got this so the shortened string format codes may seem confusing but they are built on simple principles the first optional character is greater than or less than which means little endian or big endian respectively and specifies the ordering convention for significant bits the next character specifies the type of data it can be characters bytes ints ints floating points and so on so now let's just see a table which is numpy data types so the last character or characters represent uh, the size of the object in bytes. 